Let me tell you something I wish someone had told me years ago. Trauma doesn't just hurt your past, it hijacks your present, it rewires your future. You think you're just anxious or lazy or too sensitive. But what if it's not your fault? What if your brain is doing exactly what it was forced to do to survive? Because trauma changes you, physically, mentally, and emotionally. And the worst part? You often don't even realize it's happening. In this video, I'll explain how trauma and PTSD literally rewire your brain, and most importantly, how you can begin to take that power back. I used to snap at people for no reason. Loud noises made my heart race. And sometimes, in the middle of a completely normal day, I'd suddenly feel like I couldn't breathe. I thought I was broken, weak. Until one day, during a random therapy session, my therapist said, your brain is stuck in survival mode. I laughed, but she wasn't joking. She explained how trauma, especially unresolved trauma, can get locked into your nervous system. It's not just in your memories, it's in your biology. Your body remembers, and your brain, it adapts to keep you safe, even if that means living in a constant state of emergency. Section 1. The Survival Switch When you go through something deeply threatening, like abuse, a violent assault, a serious car crash, growing up in an unstable home, or even just witnessing violence. Your brain doesn't process it like a memory. It flips a switch. This is called the fight-flight-freeze response, and it's controlled by the oldest part of your brain, often called the reptilian brain. In seconds, your body floods with cortisol, your heart pounds, blood rushes to your muscles. Rational thinking shuts down. Your entire system is screaming, how do I survive this? And in true danger, that response can save your life. But with trauma, especially when it's unresolved, your brain doesn't turn that switch back off. You stay stuck in survival mode, even when you're safe. It's like your brain is still preparing for a disaster that already passed. Section 2. Four Ways Trauma Changes the Brain So how exactly does trauma change the brain? Let's break it down into four key areas. 1. The amygdala, the smoke alarm of the brain. This part of your brain is responsible for detecting threats. After trauma, it becomes overactive and hypersensitive. Imagine a smoke alarm that goes off not just for fires, but for toast, candles, or even a warm shower. For trauma survivors, this means everything feels dangerous. A slammed door, someone raising their voice, a stranger walking too close. These aren't just annoying, they feel life-threatening. 2. The hippocampus, the memory and emotion filter. Trauma shrinks this area? Why does that matter? Because the hippocampus is the part that helps you tell the difference between past and present. That's why flashbacks feel so real. Your brain isn't just remembering what happened. It thinks it's happening right now. Even worse, the hippocampus can become foggy. You might forget entire parts of your past or have fragmented memories that pop up randomly and overwhelm you. 3. The prefrontal cortex, the thinking brain. This is where logic, planning, and language live. But trauma shuts it down. That's why it's so hard to explain what happened. To stay calm in conversations, or to feel like your emotions make sense. You're not stupid. You're not overreacting. Your brain is literally trying to survive. 4. The nervous system, the control center. When trauma becomes chronic, your entire nervous system gets dysregulated. You live in a constant state of hyperarousal or shutdown. One moment, you're jumpy, anxious, overwhelmed. The next, you feel numb, depressed, and exhausted? This roller coaster doesn't mean you're crazy. It means your system is fried. Section 3. The Trauma Loop When trauma takes hold, it's not just one part of the brain that gets affected. It's a chain reaction. The amygdala becomes hyperactive, sensing danger everywhere. The hippocampus misfires, confusing past and present. The prefrontal cortex, the part that helps you stay calm and think clearly, goes offline, and your nervous system stays stuck in high alert or complete shutdown. This creates what I call the trauma loop. It's a constant cycle of fear, confusion, and exhaustion. It messes with your relationships, disrupts your sleep, and makes it hard to trust anyone, even yourself. You may start avoiding people, numbing your emotions, or relying on addictive behaviors just to feel something, or nothing at all. But here's the truth. This isn't weakness. It's survival. Your brain adapted in the only way it knew how to protect you, not to punish you. Section 4. Can you heal? Yes. Here's the part I wish more people shouted from the rooftops. Healing is absolutely possible. 
Just like trauma rewired your brain to survive the worst, healing can rewire it to embrace the best. You are not stuck this way forever. Thanks to something called neuroplasticity, your brain can actually form new neural pathways. It can unlearn fear patterns. It can relearn safety, trust, and peace. That's not wishful thinking. It's science. Your brain is built to adapt, and that's where real hope lives. Healing doesn't mean forgetting what happened or pretending it didn't hurt. It means your brain and body slowly learning. It's safe now. You made it. This isn't a magical overnight fix, but it is a journey. And it's one worth taking, because you deserve a life that isn't controlled by your past, but created by your present power. Section 5. How to Start Rewiring Your Brain You don't have to fix everything overnight. Healing isn't some grand breakthrough moment. It's a slow, quiet process built on small, repeated actions that gently teach your brain. You are safe now. Start with mindfulness meditation. Even 5 minutes a day can calm the overactive amygdala and strengthen the prefrontal cortex, giving you back a sense of control. Writing exercises are powerful too. Journaling your thoughts, emotions, or memories can help reactivate the hippocampus and begin to soften the trauma loop. Therapy that's informed by trauma, like EMDR, somatic experiencing, or cognitive behavioral therapy, can quite literally change your life by helping you process what once felt unprocessable. And never underestimate the power of movement. Yoga, deep breathing, even just shaking your body can release trauma that's been trapped for years. These practices won't erase your past, but they will help your brain remember something crucial. It's no longer happening. You're here, and you're healing. All right, if no one has told you this today, let me be the one to say it. You are not stupid. You are not weak. You're a survivor of something your nervous system never got to process. And healing, it is absolutely possible. It starts with awareness, with tiny steps, with compassion, for your brain, for your body, and for the younger version of you who went through all of this without the tools to make sense of it. So, if this video resonated with you, don't just scroll. Leave a comment below. Tell me one small step you're taking to heal. Or just say, I'm here. Because I promise you, you are not alone. And you deserve a life that doesn't feel like an emergency. Thank you for being here. And please, always be gentle with yourself.